Good afternoon. Before we begin, a disclaimer uh, about tonight's program. It, this is going to be basically a coverall of a lot of things we discussed. So we're going to talk about addiction, whether it's alcoholism or obesity or compulsive gambling. And we'll have a reminder about multiple sclerosis. This may be sensitive to some of our, view some of our viewers. Viewer discretion, as always, is advised. We remind you to consult your doctor, your mental health professional, your outreach group, your sponsor, or specialist before adopting any change to your dietary, physical, and or mental health regime. If you're looking for options with respect to mental health, contact SAMHSA, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, 1-800-662-HELP. It's 1-800-662-4357. It's a service that's open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, and is a confidential free information service for individuals and family members facing such stressors. Importantly, if you're feeling suicidal crisis and need to be put in touch with a crisis center, call a suicide prevention lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. Or go to suicidepreventionlifeline.org. You can also text the word HOME to 741-741. Those resources are also available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And then importantly, something that I've been discussing uh, over the last six months, 16, wow, six months, wow, last 18 months, and quite frankly, the last 11 years, is that in my fight of multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a disorder that not only affects the brain, but it affects the connection between the brain and the body. The National MS Society is the largest private funder of MS researchers in the world, investing more than $1 billion to date. MS stops people from moving, but the National MS Society exists to make sure that MS doesn't. To contact the National MS Society, please call 1-800-344-4867. Once again, 1-800-344-4867. Or go to their website at nationalmssociety.org. As we did last year, we are still raising money for the National MS Society through A Venture to a Cure. It's a page that was created uh, for the for the Walk MS 2022 that was held in Media, Pennsylvania in early May. And we will continue to raise money for the National MS Society through the end of September. You can reach that website at rebrand.ly slash adventure to a cure. Once again, rebrand.ly slash adventure to a cure. Thank you to all of you who have donated money to this amazing organization or have even gone to the National MS Society to learn more about demyelination and multiple sclerosis. It touches me and over to 1 million people in this country who have multiple sclerosis in so many ways. We appreciate all of you. And on that, I'm to get this show started. Let's begin. <laughs> As we come to the end of season four, I figured this would be a good time for me to go through some of the questions I get asked a lot. Whether it was a question about how I lost all this weight or a question about my sobriety, or a question about the compulsive gambling, or a question about my fight against MS, or a question about codependency. Tonight we're going to go through some of those questions and some of those answers. Moreover, we're going to talk about things that we usually talk about in VF Talks. Anything and everything. Frequently asked questions, and your questions and comments, because this is the Venture Forward.
Good evening, or good morning, or good afternoon once again, and welcome to the Venture Forward. I am John Venturini, a recovering addict of multiple, of, of oh, alcoholism, overeating obesity, and compulsive gambling, and it is an honor and pleasure to see all of you on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. It has been a story, and then some, um, and I know we have done Ask Me Anythings before in the past, but there is a list of questions that I usually get asked, and I think there is only one person that I know that can help me go through these questions in the most orderly fashion possible. And that would be that would be Matt Haas. Hi, everybody. That guy. How well, you doing, hello. Matt? I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you for inviting me to do this, John. I... Uh... Hope I uh, deliver for you. Uh, I know, I know for a fact you will. It is. Um, I, I I think of everything that um, you know of this story, and quite frankly, there's a lot here, right? I know you know a lot of the background. I know we've had discussions about the background, and there is no better person that can go through this list than you. So there, just to keep everybody up to date, uh, the question came out of my mouth on Monday when we went to lunch. I said, look, I'm going to be doing a Frequently Asked Questions show on Thursday. Can, can you help me out with this? And, and what was your reaction? I was like, am I allowed to bring the show off the rails? <laughs> but I said yes. <laughs> I mean, would, would, would we expect anything different? I mean, quite frankly, would we expect anything different? No, I know this is uh, your uh, show on your main channel, and it's not the Friday VF Talk Show, so there's a different flavor to it. So we shall uh, – I will, I will try not to bring it off the rails, but no guarantees. If you bring it off the rails, it's perfectly fine. And then there, it, there are a bunch of people on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter – they are probably going to expect that. So let's see who wins the door prize tonight, and that would be Jaden, who says hello over on YouTube. Good evening, Jaden. Hope you are doing well. We also have Rich Vibes, who says hello, guys. Hello, Rich. Hope you're doing well across the pond. We also have Jerry Brown, who says hello, everyone. Hey, Jerry, how you doing? We got Brian Kendall over on YouTube, who says, woo woo, hello, all. I hope I did the right sort of liberty as far as with the woo woo, probably with not as much gusto as, as I should have. Uh, I'll do better for next time. <laughs> Robin's buys and DIYs over on YouTube who says, Hi, everyone. Hi, Robin. Hope you're doing well. We got Marilyn who's on YouTube who says, Good evening, everyone, with three waves and three purple hearts. Well, three waves and three blue hearts back at you. We also have Sammy Superstar on YouTube who says, Hey, everyone. Hey, Sammy. Hope you're doing well. And we also have Rollo on YouTube who says, hi, folks. Rollo, it is great to see you this evening. Hope you're doing well as well. And I think that is who's here right now. I'm really, I'm, I'm glad to see everybody tonight. This is great. All right. Should I fire questions your way? Go, go fire some questions. And, and here's, here's the thing. We're going to talk about the overeating obesity. We're going to talk about the alcoholism. We're going to talk about the compulsive gambling. We may touch upon codependency a little bit, and we'll talk about the MS for a little bit as well. If there's any questions you have, by all means, pop them into the chat, put a cue in front of the question, and we will get to as many of the questions as you have this evening. This is not only the frequently asked questions, but it is also live questions and comments and we also have jamie over on youtube who says hey all hey jamie hope you are well okay, okay. matt without any further ado go for it let's jump in and i'll i'll try and keep you uh focused as far as timing goes because there's a lot of questions here folks so there's about 387 questions yep yep well, i struck one off so there's 386. Um, I'm glad you did that. that that's that's <laughs> really important. All right. Let's uh, start with the weight loss category. Mm. And what I would like to know is Weight Watchers, Nutrisystem, did you ever embrace some of those public big options to uh, – aid in your weight loss journey what do you have to say about that that's uh that's a really great question um so i think in the course of someone who was 
overweight, obese most of his life. We couldn't be without a Weight Watchers or a Nutrisystem or any of that. There was actually one when I was 13, 12, 13 years old called Diet Center. I was actually on Diet Center. It was a little bit ahead of its time, but then also a little bit behind its time too, because they gave you like a little sheet of paper and you had to mark your food and they gave you supplements and this, that, and the other thing. And you had to have at least eight glasses of water. And there was a rule on the bottom of the sheet. And I, I almost feel like it was in triplicate. It was almost like it was on carbon paper. I don't know why. I kind of remember that. Who the heck knows? Is it for my coach? No idea. But the bottom, it says, do not drink or eat anything after eight o'clock. And like, I'm thinking, well, gremlins came out before that. So is that like, if, if it's after midnight, did the gremlins come out? I mean, does, does Gizmo turn into, is, is that sort of thing? Um, but I can understand why. I think the, the sort of mindset as far as nutritional health, even back in the 80s, was that um, you have to let the body um, basically have enough time to get ready for bed and then go through a, a normal fast not saying intermittent fasting as we know at 186, but you know, that sort of paradigm. So yeah, I did diet center. I did weight watchers before it was WW. And then even for a little while with the WW, I did the points plus the pro points, all, and you name all the points. I did the points. Oh. I did the points. Wow. And wow. then some Nutrisystem as well, which, which Matt, the funny thing about Nutrisystem is, um, you become very, um, you become very much in touch with the bathroom. Oh yeah. Got it. Say yeah. no more. <laughs> so the thing that ended up working is cal calorie counting. You know, basically, you know, calorie in versus calorie out, energy in versus energy out. Um, as I mentioned on the show many times, the, the tool that I use, and I don't have a graphic that showed us, so is something called Lose It, L-O-S-E-I-T. Lose It is... Um, definitely something that has come in very handy in this journey i lost 314 pounds and is, I, I, is that what happened recently did you use that app in your recent yes you you've you've gone like a up and down a roller coaster with your weight loss right yeah so i i used it within this whole entire journey since february of 19 i also used it in the journey back in 10 11 as well i used to lose it back then it was lose it was something where it was working really well so it was something where um i've used lose it for a long time so much so that i'm a platinum member i'm not not a sponsor not a sponsor but lose it.com definitely a great site for sure so what are your thoughts regarding exercise and losing weight it's a great question um i think the thing about exercise and losing weight is this when you're 480 pounds, it is very hard to go down that road without some sort of guidance, whether it is a dietitian or a physical therapist or what have you. I think as you develop more energy, you develop more of a, just a way of living so you can breathe, um, you would start bringing that in. But the first, I would say, hmm, the first year of this journey, three three years of this journey i was basically diet alone and then within i would say the end of 19 early 20 that's when the exercise started coming in in 2021 it was about the steps 21 was starting to work out going back to the gym because the second time i lost the weight the first time when i lost the weight i was going to the gym and Within the last year or so, it's been a lot about the running, um, where I think the thing I can do that can take this journey to the next level is going on runs, whether it is a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, a whole marathon. So it has been basically a work in progress, but it, it's working slowly but surely. Okay. Okay. All right. So... Uh... Here's a question I think Austin Nepp would like. He just joined the chat over on uh, Awesome Fun Things. Hi, Austin. We know Austin. him. He's high Hey, school. Austin. How are you, man? Uh, how has bowling helped with your weight loss? Because <laughs> Austin's on his way up to be a pro bowler, if you don't know that. So. 
Austin, if you can let me know in the comments what's your average and, and how, how many leagues are you bowling a week right now? Because you're making me jealous. I haven't joined a league since this uh, this third round here. But mm -hmm. the first time I lost a weight in 01, 02, bowling was part of it. I was part of two leagues. Two leagues. I was part of a Wednesday rec league on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. And I was part of a mixed league on Thursdays. And I think the whole thing about bowling is... Oh, it's just it's just you rolling a ball down the lane. It's a 16 pound ball, right? And oh, yeah. also it talks about, you know, placement of the ball, making sure you can read the lane correctly, making the lane adjustment. If you if you're finding you're not hitting the pocket to the left, you're moving to the left. If you're not hitting to the pocket to the right, you're moving to the right. So like there's a lot of mental focus, but there's a lot of physical focus as well. Austin says his average is 220 to 230. Oh man, God bless you. Up. Drop a thumbs up on this video for Austin. Thank Austin so is that's that's fantastic. I, I think the best average I had in a Wednesday rec league was the was the high one eighties, and that was like a, a a shot in the dark. I don't know how I got that high as far as um, Wednesday rec, but um, yeah, it was um, it was definitely something that was a lot of fun. And, and quite frankly. If I could find time in my calendar to start putting bowling back into it, I'm, there's a great bowling alley in Downingtown called the Palace. I'm really thinking about starting to go back to league once the fall comes and joining a rec league again. So, got okay. me inspired. Don't let that cut into your Fogo time. <laughs> That's true. Jerry says I he used to bowl two times a week, league and practice, also nine holes of golf. Definitely every week helped lose some weight for him. And his father-in-law until he got sports elbow and had to quit. Very good. And Very Austin's good. going to a tournament this weekend. So thanks for the question, Austin. Appreciate it. All right, we're going to switch things up here. We're, well, we'll come back to some weight loss uh, in a moment, but we're going to bounce around to uh, some, other, some other topics. Gambling. All right. So what is your... Um, Sorry, I'm looking at my soundboard. <laughs> Something's making sound, but it's not bleeding through to the to the uh, show, so I'm not going to worry about it. All right. Um, how long have you been gambling? Well, I haven't how been. How long have you gambled? In I, I gambled for a long time. I, I think when I think about it. So you're how old? I am 98 years old. You wouldn't believe it, but um, no, I'm 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 going to be 45 in July. All right, so you know, I, I imagine you know your early years would be that. So, like, what what would be the number of years con added up together that you would you would have been gambling? Well, I think if we go prior to the age of gambling that's allowed in the, in the United States, but also allowed as far as lottery is concerned. I was I was playing lottery games when I was 18, 19, where you can do that, which is really weird. I'm surprised that the law is like, if you're 18, 19, 20, you could play the lottery, but you can't go to the casino until you're 21. Whatever that was, I have no idea. Um, that. Yeah. You have to be 21 to play the lottery. No, 18, 18. But yeah, I've been gambling for a long time. And, you know, it'd be funny, I would get, greeting cards come holidays birthdays what have you and the greeting cards would have scratchers in it and like that was that was that was a thing like yeah. here's some scratch tickets or here here's here's a lottery ticket you know it was very much a part of growing up and like like it, it's it was part of my life and, and as far as you know the first time I went to a casino legally, I it was 21. My, my, my dad took me to Atlantic City, went to, uh, went to Trump Marina, formerly Trump Castle. Now I believe it's the Hard Rock. And and yeah, that was a thing. My dad and I would go twice a year to, to Atlantic City to, to gamble. And he, he, he was a player. He, he was there all the time. But I was there. And I think the other thing, Matt, is once I moved to Connecticut, I spent a lot of time over at Foxwoods and Mohegan Sun over in southeastern Connecticut, spending money I sh did not have. Did not have, right? And then as I was starting to make more money, well, guess what John did with that money? It was like, ah, oh, man. 
people are telling me uh, in the comments, Brad says 21 for casino is because of the alcohol. And Jamie was alluding to that, maybe because they serve alcohol at the casino. Yeah, I, that's probably right. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I don't know if this is very important, but one of the questions is, what were the games that you played? Sure. Um, I, I played everything. I mean, that's I not played... like a that's not a question that's going to really do harm to you, is it? No, no, no. I, it's the reality is this. I'm going to cut a little bit of a head on this. I, I think of the pain and destruction that gambling caused me. I think about the fact that I am in the middle of a Chapter 13 bankruptcy. I'm a quarter of the way in. I, I just put my 15th payment in and realize I have 45 more payments to go. Realizing that I'm on a very tight plan as things, the price of things are increasing day after day after day. 7 to 8% inflation month over month. Like it's... Some items are double digits. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's absolutely ridiculous You're talking about five dollar gas all right it's i don't have money to, to gamble one two i can't gamble because bankruptcy so the last thing you can do all ps last thing you can do when you're in the middle of a bankruptcy is use any of the disposable income that you have and gamble with it and they don't look at it really um really nicely so yeah there's there's Who's that sort of you um there's a there's a trustee over uh, over in Philly that would, and if I get caught, they'll discharge it, and then I have to pay back all the debtors that are in that Chapter 13 claim. So there's there's that. I think the other thing is I look I remember looking at all of those 1099 forms, Matt, and remember how disgusted I was as far as how much money I lost, and sure did I win this? Yeah, but did I end up giving that back and then some? Yeah, because I had no sort of control. I had that There's no dopamine. that off, is there? <laughs> right. And it's, you have to pay full freight on that income. Oh, yeah. On, on the winnings, which is oh, technically yeah. considered income. Yeah. yeah, I mean, certainly anything you lose. So the one thing they would tell you is you have to keep it a log about what you win versus what you lose. Yeah. And in this way, at the end of the year, you have a log. But even then... It's like, eh, uh, 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 and it's, yeah, of course it's spiraled down because you would yeah. be losing over time. But there, there'd be strategically placed wins to kind of keep you going. But you, you could never get above one. <laughs> I was like, mm -mm. That, that's, that's pretty evil. Like it, it, was, it was the perfect ratio of don't annoy him to make, make him get up. But like don't reward him where he's, you know, it just kept on. I don't know if I described that very well, but no, I just you, that you, you described it perfectly. Austin saying uh, gas is four eighty nine over in Harrisburg. That's nuts, nuts. Yeah, you, you think about you think about why casinos have employed really top minds at the major gaming and gaming companies like Bally and IGT and whatnot, and it's because at the end of the day, they um they're in the business of making money through gambling, right? They, they, they're not coming up with these games in a non-profit sort of thing. They're going to get their cut and they're going to make it attractive. So you keep on playing. And that goes more over to the, um, the indis, uh, the indis, and well, I can't even say the word, the inane nature, inane nature of the amount of co uh, commercials you see on TV for online casinos, online gaming books and whatnot. It is relentless. Because you oh, think about well, that's another revenue stream for them. Casinos and gaming companies, they've got the funds to pay marketing. Yeah. They right. pay too. You know, when they reach out to you, I want to put this on your channel. We want you to do a promo spot for me. Their checks never bounce. <laughs> they got the they got the cash. They do. Um now when are you going to 
come to the realization that my method of playing blackjack is better than yours because you always double on 11, even if the dealer has a 10 shot. No, I'm just – don't answer that. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> Man, I, 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 I'll give you the same answer I told you before. There is help for you. Um, I mean, there are mathematicians that will tell you you're, uh, you're, you're crazy. And uh, – right. Uh, no. I don't know. I'm just kidding. I did that too. I I I I did double with with the ten. They did not have Mm-mm. dealer did not have blackjack. But no, I did no. not win, unfortunately. I was not not too happy. No, um, no, my it was the sort of thing that I kept on doing. I give all that and then some, so I don't even touch it. I stay as far the heck away from it. Yeah. What was what was the bottom of gambling that made you think? All right, I gotta jump. I gotta I gotta stop this. Okay. Not the most customary answer that you think about, but I'm sure in this day and age, it's probably an answer that you would hear. But it's this. In late 2019, my wife and I separated. She she moved back to Connecticut. And... Certainly with her with her leaving, the only way I was passing the time just to keep my wits about it was gambling, which was just bad. It's I said I'm overeating. That's not good. And I'm not drinking anymore, but I was still gambling. Everything seemed fine, but in January, um divorce papers were served and whatnot. And you think, okay, well, I definitely have to rein in the things a bit now and keep an eye on the money I'm making and whatnot. (laughs) A month later, I get a piece of registered mail from the IRS saying, um, that's never good. They're interested in auditing the 2017 return. Not just looking at an examination. They want a full fledged audit. Now, you may be saying to yourself, okay, well, that's a lot of meetings and there's a lot of things. Oh, you got to get all those papers. and A couple of things that kind of worked in my favor. One, I did have tax audit relief through TurboTax. Very thankful for that. Got to meet an incredible person by the name of Jesse. Great friend. We still talk to today. But she's, she's an amazing person. So they provide you that service? You, if you pay Turbo for it, you, you know, the yeah. twenty dollar tool that makes you do the taxes. Well, it's a lot more than that. I was paying what four or five hundred dollars a return, but through TurboTax? Yeah, there's a lot more to that. There's 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 a lot of things going. It's to, criminal. To, yeah, it's not criminal. It's it's fine. It, it got me protection, and that's I'm very um very thankful for that. Anyhow, I I think that's the first thing. The second thing that was going on is the thing that we refer to as the Backstreet Boys reunion tour. So everything that we would do in person, well, they're they're all virtualized now. It's a lot of paper going back forth and whatnot. So there's that too. The timing was ac- absolutely, um, I guess, kind to what is a tricky situation. Um, yeah. Having a piece of registered mail from Washington will tell you, hey, um, it might be time for you to stop, especially especially when you start preparing documents in defense of tax returns and looking at 1099s, looking at win-loss statements, looking at this and that and the other thing and realizing, oh my God, what the heck did I do to myself? And did I have much savings to my name? No, no. And, And I'm paying utilities left, right, and sideways and paying mortgage on a big house and... Yeah, it was hitting me straight in the face. Now, I guess the other thing that was interesting is the fact that this whole thing with the pandemic takes place and there is the CARES Act, which got me a little bit of time to breathe. I I got forbearance because my, my, my income was somewhat slighted too. I have a variable comp piece too. So like, but even then that was going to run out and I'm, I'm, running and scratching and whatnot and it was just and then you start doing that introspection matt you start looking at like why was i 
using all that money to get something that wasn't going to get me any sort of return. What was the point of all this? And I also think about the times I was I was gambling in a high limit room and I had like a sort of doped look on my face just because I was doing the same thing over and over and over again. Looking for that big win, looking for that big oh man, Matt. It was it was the same nerve center as what was having me in the back of a, a drive through lane at a Burger King or the same sort of dopamine that was going through me when I was drinking was not good. It had to be removed. If I was working so hard to remove everything else, it stands to reason that there is no utility for that. Ingi says, hola from Oregon. Ingi, good to see you this evening. All right. Um, we have a softball question. Coming Go for up it. Here. <laughs> Slow pitch. Here we go. Surely the lottery is safe, right? Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, we no, all knew no. the answer to that one. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a softball. Um, the funny thing about that softball, though, is that softball was chiefly responsible for one of the largest wins I had gambling. I was um, playing online lottery i was playing um so in, in pennsylvania we have uh the i lottery right and it just came out in 19 so i figured ah that sounds like fun i might as well do that and i dumped a little money in there i think i was like a thousand fifteen hundred down and i was playing a one wednesday at wednesday after work and i was playing a stupid game right right here i was sitting right here and I hit for $50,000. Hey. Yeah. So great, exciting, but you're talking to someone who's a compulsive gambler. So what did John do with the 50000 Or After taxes, what, 31000 What did he do with the 31000 He ended up gambling that and then some. Now, did it help him with a couple of bills? Yeah, but he wasn't smart with that money and it wasn't the sort of thing where he said okay that's it i'm done i'm 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 leaving i'm i'm no no it was horrible wow 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 yeah 50 g's 31 after taxes okay austin says nothing's ever safe uh but then he says sorry i meant everything is never safe yes yeah everything is never safe indeed all righty if there's any questions that the audience has Drop a cue in front of your question and, and ask it. All right. Um, we're about uh, halfway through the questions, and we're about uh, halfway through the first hour. So I think we're making good time. First hour of five. So here we go. <laughs> okay. Codependency. Mm. Now, can you give me the elevator pitch as to what that is? Because I don't fully have a grasp of it. If you don't mind. I. That's not... I'm going to tell you what codependency means to me. And then because I have a browser over here, we could look up the codependency term as far as Miriam Webster. We'll do it both ways. Okay. What codependency means to me is not having any sort of faith in myself and letting other people basically dictate what I need to do for me. Right. So for losing my opinion, worried about other people's sort of impression, all of that. So um, it's that other people that always had me not fully grasping that. Yeah. So that's I, a big part of it. Oh, without question. It's it's. Can you have some of these problems without having that exterior person influence you? Or I guess then that wouldn't be codependency. It's still codependency. So, so the actual, so I'm going to bring up the graphic real quick. Are we still here? We're we still here. Good. Are we still here? Yeah. I, I got a weird thing from me camp for a second. Okay. The thing that Webster says, it's, it's excessive emotional or physiological reliance on a partner, typically one who requires support on account of an illness or addiction. Now, the thing is this, if you think about it, that could also mean people that are not your partner. Could mean friends, could mean people that are in your element, could mean a lot of things that are not necessarily your partner, not necessarily your family, 
but not necessarily you. And then the thing is, if you kind of draw that sort of relationship from other things, other places, other events, you are codependent. When you lose that sort of reign of free thought of taking care of yourself, you have become codependent. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. So how did you know you were codependent? What made you realize? Therapy. Okay. Lots of therapy. I think it was an element when I was going, when I lost the weight the second time in 11 and 12, where the term codependency was popped up, but was never honed in. I think there was a lot of things that I was trying to figure out as I was losing the weight the second time that were taking precedence. I think when we fast forward to 19 and the incredible events that took place in order for me to lose the weight, but then realize that the drinking had no piece of this anymore. Then it became a question of what was causing you to drink? What was causing you? What was putting you into those situations where you had to have a drink, where you had to be part of certain things and, and just be in elements where drinking was the norm? I think that fully got honed in on in 19. But then that's also when we, when I learned about the concept of a Cartman drama triangle, which is a sense where three people where they're all acting together, but one is the, basically the victim narcissist. One is the prominent narcissist and then one is the bully. And the three are working together in a sort of melange, if you will, sort of dance. And I think about, my family and I know of a Cartman, K-A-R-P-M-A-N, Cartman drama triangle that are definitely people that have basically taught me things in this life. And yet in front of me are people that didn't have any sort of will about having their own life. Well, one didn't have a will of their own life. One had more of a flippant sort of way about it. And then one was more of, um, I guess, the the ringleader, if you will, the 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 sort of the the driver of the group. Nevertheless, Matt, very unhealthy behavior, but also a quintessential definition of group codependency. Wow. Okay. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around all this, but yeah, um, it's starting to uh, starting to become clear. Thank you for for that. Quick comment that Kevin had uh, came in late. The gambling story hit close to home, went through a period in his early 20s where he was in the poker room nightly, many highs, many lows, mostly lows. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in the poker room too. I played a lot of sit and goes and a lot of dollar, two dollar ring games, two dollar, five dollar ring games. Poker was definitely something I played. So could you have gotten through that? without therapy or therapy like what what was how important was therapy to all of this codependency process and getting past it it kind of makes me wish i had a cup of coffee right now because i'm going to lean back and talk about this but like i look at it this way when we see the order of operations you first see a 480-pound guy who couldn't walk more than 5 or 10 feet. He needed to sit down because he, he could barely breathe. But then you also saw someone who was eating a lot and then it was someone who was also drinking. And even though he was starting to lose the weight, starting to work on losing the weight, he was still drinking. So he only lost 30 of the 480, 30 of the 300 pounds he had to lose, 40 of the th- uh, 300 pounds he had to lose within the first four months of the diet. So that was a thing. But underneath all of that, there were factors that that really caused him to overeat, really caused him to basically shuffle those sort of things under the rug. And it's because he had a very unhealthy relationship with interpersonal relations. And that's because he had a not a very bad example, but he knew from an example where just there was that unhealthy sort of dance. So the only way I was going to figure that out is based on advice that a dear friend gave me 
John, you should go back to therapy, but not just any sort of therapy. You are a man who is complicated. You are a man of parts. So you should really look into psychologytoday.com. Great site, by the way. And try to find an internal family therapist, internal, internal family systems therapist by you. Because an IFS therapist, internal family systems therapist, treats us as parts and not the complete whole. We are a sum of our parts and each part needs to be honored. There is no such thing as a bad part that we are basically comprised of all the parts. But through that work, you're going to have a better stance on where you sit with those codependent factors, whether it's a question of your family, whether it's a question of your partner, whether it's a question of your job or this. So those are or the that. parts, job, partner, family. Well, those are the, yes and no. No, no. The parts, our parts are basically the sort of hats we wear with respect to those people. And we may have multiple hats we wear. We may have multiple parts for each of these people, right? So the parts talk to us, right? It forms ourself. And then the question is, well, what in our life is managing those parts? And then what in our life is firefighting those parts? What are our firefighters? Now, when we talk about firefighters, we talk about things that have a malevolent outcome, i.e. drinking, i.e. drugs, i.e. alcohol, i.e. gambling, i.e. etc. When we talk about managing, we talk about a healthy way of managing those parts, managing those different things, whether it's the different events we do or whatnot. So that's, that's what we talk about in IFS. Um, parts yeah. theory, parts therapy is something we discussed on the show before. We'll probably talk about a lot more come season five uh, because you'll find that IFS is more than just thinking about how we relate to our family per se. We talk about family in the sense of the union of many different pieces of who we are. That's the family in question. Okay. I don't know if we've covered this, but uh, prior to your journey. Sure. What sort of codependent tendencies were prominent in your life? A lot of people pleasing. A lot of situations where I was in places where I didn't want to drink. I ended up drinking because of the situation I was in. I was at a dinner or this or that or the other thing. I think the other, th the other thing I realized towards the, I'd say, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, is that more and more my voice started becoming more and more squelched, more and more shunted because I wasn't fighting for myself anymore. There were too many domineering forces in this life that kind of browbeated me anytime I had an opinion, anytime I had something to say, anything I had something to offer. God, that's a brutal existence. It is. Yeah. Holy heck. And that's from multiple realms. It's not just one realm. There's at least three or four of the realms that I was in was giving me that. Mm. Some things we can control, some things we can't. But then in all of those instances, we should have a better way of having the upper hand in all of those things. And when we don't, it's not necessarily a question of laziness, Matt, but it's a question of scared. It's a question of, I don't know what to do. And I don't know where to go. And I'm, I'm just going to keep on shuffling under the rug by drinking or by overeating or by gambling or whatnot. Because that's going to keep me and my parts yeah. satiated. Even though that satiation is from very, very malevolent sort of or very, very not healthy sort of places. All right. Books and resources. What do you have for the... Uh audience as far as learning learning materials i will i will talk about this book as long as i keep on doing this show but even more in the book that i'm writing i i cite it a couple of times i refer i refer to melody Beatty's language of letting go yep. because you hit that a lot on your on your show. yes 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 yeah. because you think about a lot of the passages that are in language of letting go it talks about how 
we lose sight of ourselves and we let other forces just kind of drive us away from that and how that is not the right thing to do. We, we go back to, you know, the fact that our love and our strength and our wisdom and our health starts here first. It starts here. And then it goes for anyone else. I mean, it's without question. Uh, Rolo says today's language of letting go is awesome. You know what? On that, I think I'm going to talk about today's language of letting go, if you don't mind, Matt. I'm going to get up on, on camera. Okay. You think I have a, a bookmark for it, but I don't. It's better for me just to type it, right? Do, do they give little quotes every day or little Oh, this, little is, this is a good one. Hey, Rolo, you're spot on. Let me, let me go to the scene over here. Language of Letting Go for Thursday, June 2nd. This is the first time I'm doing a Language of Letting Go with you on, on the show. So we could read this. Yeah. Uh, owning, our, owning our power. We don't have to give others so much power and ourselves so little. We don't have to give others so much credit in ourselves so little. In recovery from codependency, we learn there's a big dependent, a big difference rather, between humility and discounting ourselves, discounting ourselves. When others act irresponsibly and attempt to blame their problems on us, we no longer feel guilty. We let them face their own consequences. When others talk nonsense, we don't question our own thinking. When others try to manipulate or exploit us, we know it's okay to feel anger and distrust and to say no to the plan. When others tell us that we want something that we really don't want, or someone tells us that we don't want something that we really do want, we trust ourselves. When others tell us things we don't believe, we know it's okay to trust our instincts. We can even change our mind later. We don't have to give up our personal power to anyone, strangers, friends, spouses, children, authority figures, or those over whom we're in authority. Other side of that. People may have things to teach us. They may have more information than we have and may appear more confident or forceful than we feel, but we are equals. Our magic is not in them. Our magic, our light is in us and it is as bright a light as theirs. We're not second-class citizens. By owning our power, we don't have to become aggressive or controlling. We don't have to discount others, but we don't discount ourselves either. Today, I will own my power with people. I will let myself know what I know, feel what I feel, believe what I believe, and see what I see. I will be open to changing and learning from others and experience, but I will trust and validate myself too. I will stand yeah. in my own truth. And that is the language of letting go. See. It you know, also would help for me to get I've this back to the right graphic. There we go. Good. I've got some comments on that, but this show's not about me. So um, I do. I will give you. I will give you at least one comment. Go for it. Well, attacking, moving through life and dealing with people. There's always someone's can be up here and someone can be down there right and that disparity it seems to me and based on what you just read that's not good like people should be equals like there's always if two people are in a restaurant mm -hmm. and someone's like how long does it take to make a grilled cheese sandwich i'm waiting here a long time and then the other so there's two types of responses for that. It's like, oh, oh, it's, it's okay. They're probably busy, you know, just, you know, try, you know, there's that type of response. And then there's the response of, 
heck yeah, how long does it take to make a freaking grilled cheese sandwich? So it's like, you know, like where where are you? So like if if someone's if someone's complaining about something like if someone has an issue, right. like do you respond down here like oh it's okay they're probably busy or do you respond like do you take it up there? <laughs> I don't know don't have this like, it seems to me it's the disparity that's the problem Jamie agrees with you okay. um I, I will I, say that the way I see the world is I break things down in the simplest of terms and you know I think the power of of that passage though talks about the fact that it's when we become browbeated from where we are supposed to be, the expectations of where we're supposed to be, and forced to go lower than that, that becomes a problem. And the other thing is, and I'll, I'll use your grilled cheese example, we both have an equal right to be there. Whether I paid for a grilled cheese sandwich or some proprietor is paying you to make that grilled cheese sandwich. We both have an equal right to be there. And I don't have the right to browbeat you and you don't have the right to browbeat me. You're a human being. You're living your life. You're, you're trying to make the best life you can. Same here. And it's not about that. Um, it's about where we are. It's a situation. It, it, it almost goes to this. You know, we have to remember that we're all parts of this experience. You know, whether we're in a restaurant having a grilled cheese sandwich or we're having a live stream together or we're walking down the street or we're eating copious amounts of meat at a Brazilian steakhouse. Keep, I like to keep it relative. But we're all part of this experience and we must always remember what is important for us and never lose sight of that. We must have a standard and that standard must never be compromised that that love has to start here that bar has to start here and when we feel that bar being lowered from something that is not from our own intention we must be strong enough to serious seriously question it put proper boundaries around it or eliminate it out of our life see that's that's the thing you know i the word no is a very powerful thing. No. Successful people, like wealthy people, they say no a heck of a mm -hmm. lot. There's something to it. It's got to be something to it. All right. Sheree, before we continue, Sheree says, I believe it would have just drawn you in more. Uh, and then she also says, much, much deeper than people pleasing. And the book is very much yeah. a very deep book for sure. And remember, people, I'm 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 new to the to understanding the topic. I understand a lot about how the world works and how people work, but that topic, I'm so just know that I'm not I'm in a different place. I'm I'm always open to learn. I love learning. I love learning about everything. Now you're, you're a great learner. You, you do you do learn things really well. Yeah, I, I call amazing. you right. Mankind has written down all of its knowledge throughout all time. It's all there. You can just go get it. It's an amazing time we live in. I would call you a renaissance man, for sure. Well, yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I, I don't label myself, but that's, no. that's fun. Now, You're awesome. I'm dying to know. Sure. Weight loss. Not gambling. The codependency work all of the struggles you've pushed through you do a lot of for lack of a better term work you journal you meditate you go to therapy you i presume you go into the uh a like the anonymous sessions mm -hmm. you know where you where you like so what on a weekly basis what is the time commitment just to keep all of that going, like not doing things you like to do, not doing things you have, like not doing your, your job, like how much time do you spend with all of that? Approximately. If you want to do it by per day, per week, no, I can, I, I can, I could talk to it. As far as the journaling components concerned, it, it's about a, 15 to 20 minute exercise whether it is 
okay. whether it's something I'm just grabbing off of a photo and I want to put some commentary to, or just sitting by my microphone and just recording something from my day one journal. All that's right. that's 20 minutes. as far as the therapy. It's a it's a forty five minute session every week. However, there is about forty five minutes to sixty minutes of pre work I do for that session every Friday. And it could be done on Thursday. It could be done throughout the week. The journaling also helps with that too. I'll usually refer to some of the things I journaled when I when okay. I go for therapy on Friday. Um, with respect to the Gamblers Anonymous, it's a meeting every Saturday. It's an online meeting, so it's not. I don't have to go to a brick and mortar. It's it's there's that. Um, How long is the meeting? It's about an hour and a half. Okay. Um, I think with the recovery groups, we, we are all together, whether it's a question of recovering addict or sober James or whatnot. So that's as catch as catch can. We have a discord, we have the live stream. So LT who runs recovering addict now does a daily live stream. He's kind of copying you, Matt, which is like, you guys need to talk. Um, (laughs) I don't recommend people having so much interactions with YouTube as I do as a content creator, but there, it's neither here nor there. So, so okay, the, all the recovery group stuff, what's, what's yeah, the Yeah, I would say thing? it's about two, two and a half a day. As oh, far okay. as writing for not the journal, but for the book, it's a 30 to 60 minute exercise a day. Preparing for the show. Ideally, I'd love to do three shows a week when my nine to five obligation doesn't get in the way. Would you, would you consider a show part of all of this? No, it's separate. Okay, well, we're not going to count it then. Well, I mean, it is, it is part of it in the sense that there are a lot of things about it that I talk to from my own experience. And then I like to be I like to fine tooth it and try to come up with stories and journal articles and research that help talk to it so there's that work i would say for a tuesday thursday show that's about an hour long i probably do about two to four hours worth of work and lead to it that excludes and my production i i get it my production is bare bones i'm going to be working on it during the summer for sure so when i come with season five in the fall there'll be a lot of a higher production to the show you know i i do know a youtube expert if you uh well, when you know, can you give me their number because that would be fantastic. I don't, I don't, I don't give advice unless people ask. I, I there's, <laughs> I've, I've got some tips for you, but you know. Yeah, I, so I, that I, is three. Five point six hours a day. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. that right? Uh, it's. Some days less, some days more. But yeah, you, you work a full time job, right? I do. So you know, I presume nine to five or eight to six. Something some days like that. nine to five, some days eight to eight. I mean, then there's the also working out. So I don't forget, I I strength train three times a week. It's an hour, hour and a half each time. There is four spin classes I like to do in an optimal week. So. Uh, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. This, 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 see, go on. I avoid falling falling into those traps in life because I don't have the time for that. Like I, I, I can't do that. The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, Matt, is I love how good I feel after running. I love how good I feel after you know. Yeah. You know, so it, that gives me enough momentum to be an energy booster to do everything else. Like, like you, you got to fit in some Dave and Buster's time. You oh, absolutely. That in, goes without saying. You, you, you got to fit in some Hershey Park time. I got to, there's a you Hershey Park fit, time. I got to fit in time with, any rain, with my, my loving and lovely girlfriend down in Maryland, April. I have to spend time with her. I love spending time with her. So, well, I mean, there's. You know, she's competing for these, these, what, 5.6 well, hours she's, a day? Well, she's doing quite well. She she's she's done really well. <laughs> All right, uh, I I don't I don't mean to like uh, fake freak out over that. I'm glad you're putting in what you got to do and you're making it work. So some comments as I was talking of doing that little accounting there. Um, Kevin says as far as journaling, it makes up for and saves so much time in life because you're actually thinking through your thoughts and feelings. That's about the meditation, 
and the journaling. Uh, Sheree says avoidance and not confronting or just giving in is definitely um, part of it. And then she uh, gave uh, Rollo and myself credit on that. Um, we can move into the wild card slash lightning round. By the way, if, April 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 has topics? a very important part before we okay. continue, and she makes it. This is April brilliant point, sweetie. She says, "How is there time for Fogo with all of this?" April, at, that's at, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. We need to make more time for Fogo. I or, agree. or I'll do you one better. Purchase a Fogo franchise. Yeah, you know, it's a conversation I've had with April. It's a conversation I have with you. I know two people that would probably want to go in on this with me. And I know of another area now that doesn't have a FOGO, Tampa. There's no FOGO in Tampa. What's up with that? Let me know in the comments. You have to write that wrong. All right, is there anything about codependency, gambling, or weight loss you want to hit before we move into the lightning round? Oh, lightning round. Oh, oh, oh boy. Yeah, we were, we're an hour into the show. Just to give you time, time for it. Okay. I'm jumping. I'm jumping into the wild card round. We can hit. We can hit some other topics uh, if we need to. How do you like your steak? And if you say, "Well done," we're no longer friends. Oh, amen to that answer. I mean, <laughs> it's funny. I was telling someone about this earlier in the day too. It's a. Uh, and, and many of my friends in here know the answer to this. So if you can get to the answer before I spit it out, well, I mean, 10 points for you. But my, the light, the way I like a steak, whether we're talking about a porterhouse or we're talking about a tomahawk or we're talking about filet, we're talking about whatever, is a modified Pittsburgh sear, medium rare. Wow. Let That's... me explain that one. Because That's an it's, oddball answer. it's a five word answer. But if I say Pittsburgh Sear, as some people from Pittsburgh who are in this room know, Pittsburgh Sear says, okay, well, it's going to be charred on the outside, but it's going to be blue on the inside. It is going to be next to raw on the inside. That's the Pittsburgh Sear. Yeah. When we say modify Pittsburgh Sear, it's telling, it's telling the chef and telling the server that it, I don't necessarily want it blue on the inside. I, I want some sort of cook on the inside. Medium rare is the cook I want on the inside, but I definitely, definitely, definitely want the char on the outside. So the right way to say it is a modified Pittsburgh sear, medium rare. Whereas a regular Pittsburgh would be more rare than medium rare. It would be rare on the inside. Mm-hmm. Right. That's... Okay. Your, your alter your ego says uh, someone worked as a, as a steakhouse as a cook for three years. You know your steaks. So, so yeah, I mean, how do you like your steak, Matt? I order it medium rare. However, I would order it rare if, if it would actually be done rare. Because some people just, you know, they just touch it and they say it's done. No, no, it can't be raw with a little bit of black lines on the outside. But if, if it truly is rare, I would eat it rare, but all, the safety is just medium rare then. Yeah. Brad says crunchy, crispy steel, mm -mm, good. Uh, mm -hmm. And then he says almost raw mat. And then Jamie's with the medium. And then um, Brad says, so yummy. And then Austin has a follow-up question. I'm gonna bring up Austin's question real quick. John, would you rather go bowling or play soccer for a whole month? This one's easy. It's bowling. I'd rather bowl for an entire month. There you go. There you go. And when we say bowling, by the way, because there's some members of the audience or some echoes of my past will know there's a difference, right? When I say bowling, I'm talking traditional 10-pin bowling. However, I'm okay with duck pin. And, and duck pin is relevant to those that are um, down in the Maryland area, but also in Connecticut. And then... I don't know whoever created candle pin bowling, but I think it is basically the double incarnate who created candle pin with the very thin pins and whatnot, okay. but traditional bowling. And then Austin's asking you the same question, by the way. I uh, Soccer is too much running, so it would definitely be bowling for me. And 
if I could promote my brother's YouTube channel, he is a professional bowler. And if you want to see something really freaky, there's a guy that looks very much like me. <laughs> He's my actual brother. Uh, go find his YouTube channel and tell him I sent you. His uh, YouTube channel is Banner Knowledge Bowling. Banner Do you want to get bowling. into the comments and I'll pop it up? Yeah, I'll, I'll, pump, I'll pump it in. Okay, next question while I type would be, uh, what has been the most incredible thing you have learned in this journey and or live streaming? I am um, three things. One, I think it goes to brass tacks in the sense that I can't believe how long I held this back when even there was not a journey to talk of. I, I, I think there was definitely, um, definitely, um, a portion where I, I, I kind of held back on this and like, no one should be shunted. If you, you should be very excessive, excessive, very expressive of what you feel in this life. You shouldn't feel shunted at all about that. That's the first thing I learned. Well, it's the, what's the most incredible thing? The it's, most incredible. Oh, the, the, don't the fact. Feel, don't feel shunted is one. Yeah. I, I think the other thing is that when you put your mind to something, you can actually do anything you can in this life. Oh, yeah. And, and for the third time, nonetheless. I mean, let's face it. I lost. I went from 425 to 190, 195 from 2001 to 2002. Very quickly. That required me working out. Re required severe caloric reduction. Then, in the middle of 2000s, I gained the weight back. 2010, I had a very deep conversation with someone who says, um, you have to start losing weight. So I start going down that road. So in the process of late 2010 to 2011, I start going down that road. I end up getting sick at that demyelinating event back in 2011, which was a one-time deal, but it knocked me out of work for five weeks. And that, you know, it was something where it was really a wake-up call. It's like, I have to fix this. So I started fixing it. And I got through 2011, early 2012, and I went from 440 down to 245. So here, here, here we go, right? 425, 185, 195, and I get back to 440 in time for 2010. And then through to the 2010s, I end up gaining that weight back from 245 all the way to 480. In 2019, in January of 2019, I was 480 pounds. And I was at the point where I was having a nervous breakdown in the middle of an airport and I had to do something about this. My life was next to next to death as possibly can be. As I referred to it a few times, it was a slow suicide without question. So the fact that I was able to, to be reborn again and fix this was... Yeah, that, that is an incredible fact. And then I think the other thing is me taking full account of what's going on and taking action on it and not letting it stop me. Like if we talk about everything that happened between 2019 and now, not only from my perspective, but what has gone on in this world, you could go one of two directions. You can go into a direction where you're pressing forward on it and you're going to go as hard as you can on this. Or you're going to cower and you're going to head back the other way and you're going to let the stress of the world and stress of a pandemic end you. And I didn't do that. I kept pushing forward. And I think the work that I've done with the recovery groups and finding the recovery groups, especially at a time where I was alone, separated, down the road for divorce, don't know what I'm going to do, had so much alcohol in the closet, didn't touch it. But I definitely needed to have the motivation not to touch it anymore. And it was with the work that I did with Recovering Attic and Sober James and Real, Real Recovery with Nicole. When we were all locked down, when we were in green, yellow, red and couldn't go much of anywhere, that saved me. And then you take that and couple that with the things I learned from 
you, Matt, and the, the fellow live streamers and, and folks like Gloria and, and David and all of you guys, like without, without any of you, I, I don't think I'd be sitting here right now. You guys pretty much saved my life. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I mean every word of that. I mean every single word of that. Okay. I'm, I'm thrilled that, uh, me being around has uh, helped you in some small way, but I'm I'm just being me, you know. <laughs> you're the best uh, person you can be, Matt. You're being you. Laura yeah. says hello. How are you? I'm doing well, Laura. I hope you're doing well. Austin Jamie. asks, uh, "What age would you like to go back in time to if you could be a if you could be a younger ver a younger age of yourself?" Jamie, I, I, I Jamie, you saved my life more times than you could think. Um, so Austin says, what, what age would I go back to in life? Well, I think in 2002, when I lost the weight the first time I was 25, I would have loved to kept the weight off and stayed steadfast on why I was losing the weight and stay 25 the rest of my life. Cause I think what did I say? 25 is when your prenatal cortex is formed. So you're, you're, you're old enough not to do that juvenile, although I do juvenile things at 44. Whoa, who the heck? I'm kidding. But like, yeah, 25 was a really good year. I also say 17 was a great year too. But that's my answer. 25 was a solid year. Well, I mean, if, if the question is, would the world around me and my responsibilities be the same as it was when I was 17? Then yes. Because, you know, I had a car. I had a little bit of spending money. I had not uh, a worry in the world. Like that was a good 17 to 18. That was a good time in my life because, you know, still in high school, you know, there's just, anyway, just oh, life changes. Not, uh, not for uh, the worse. I I'll mean, keep I it relevant for a second. 17 puts us back in what, 1994. In 1995, in June of 1995, my beloved New York Rangers won the Stanley Cup for the first time in 54 years. So 17 was an incredible year. And I'm hoping that that fragment of my life can happen again this year, given how well they played against Tampa Bay last night. <laughs> okay. Um... What's your favorite game show? Oh, The Price is Right. But I, I'll, I'll qualify that, though. Come on down. I prefer Barker. Well, sure. He's the OG. He, well, no. Bill Cullen's the OG. Oh, well, if you go back that far, gotcha. Yeah. yeah Bill Cullen was definitely the uh, the OG for sure. And you ever watch those classic Price is Rights from the late 50s, no, 60s? No. Oh, my God. No, no, Incredible. No, no, no. Fun stuff. Definitely what, go go on Pluto and watch it. What do you like to do for fun? You can't say running. <laughs> I am. Um, I like I like to. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not saying running. I'm not saying running. I I like working out. I do like that. But I also like going for drives. I like seeing a lot of this world. I haven't done much of that lately because gas is five dollars a gallon. Yeah, that's true. But um. Yeah, I also like hanging out with my friends, and I've made so many great friends in the last three years. Oh my god, I'm so blessed for all of you. But like, I, I'm enjoying life again. I'm doing things that I did back when I was get ready for this seventeen, like going to amusement parks, like going to carnivals, like doing that sort of thing. I forgot about the chili dog place. We got to get you to my favorite chili dog place. We keep on saying this now, two, four seasons already. This has to happen. It's in York, Pennsylvania, which is not quite as far of a drive to my house. So it would be even a little bit easier for you to get to it. So we got to put that on the calendar. Brad's saying um, some controversial things I want to quickly address. Uh, Brad says um, the Rangers cheated so bad against Vancouver back in, in, in uh, 1994, 95. Brad, you're wrong. Uh, and Richter saving that penalty shot against Pavel Bury. Um, you're wrong. You're wrong, uh, Brad. Ten points off of you. 
And then Marilyn says, JV, thank you for being such an inspiration for everyone. You're an amazing human being and we all love you. Marilyn, I love you too. John, I think we've kind of wrapped things up. Is there any anything else you want to lay out, lay it all out there for everybody? Did, did we just put a giant bow on this? We did. Well, I mean, well, there's there's kind of things that we're going to be talking about tomorrow and coming into the summer season coming up because there will be a summer season of the venture. Um, okay, question. Sure. How do you define the seasons on your YouTube channel? Is it with summer, spring, fall? Like, I don't understand your, your, your naming convention for your, your YouTube videos. <laughs> Love you, Shuri. Um, yeah, it's the fall. The fall is, um, oh, I got to bring this up real quick. <laughs> April says, we're not, we're, well, not all the things when you were 17. Yeah, you're right, April. You're absolutely, you're absolutely right, sweetie. Absolutely. No, I take it all. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> so, so, yeah, you're, you're somewhat right. The, the seasons are fall, and then come the winter is a separate season. I uh, was kind of inspired. This is not my n numbering technique. I learned this from Rhett and Link over at Good Mythical Morning. They, that's their numbering technique. So the fall is a season. The spring is a season. And then they call their summer a summer season. And they do very much the same thing. So when you see the episode number, when you see 4.28, that's season four, episode 28. And there's three seasons per year instead of four seasons per year? Well, there's there's two seasons and then the summer season. So three a year. Yeah, but we don't call the summer season a normal season. We just call it summer. So that's the Venture Forward Summer. I, 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 this year will be called the Venture Forward Summer 22. I, that, see, I, I just number it. This is episode 187. This is episode 188. Episode 189. It's I like simple. chapters and verses. I'm sorry. It's why I like to do. And then all the VF Talks are just the date. Although we called the VF Talks summer episodes last year, VF Talks summer, so we'll probably do the same thing this year. Okay. I was just curious how you, T how you Tinkerbell, you approve? Tinkerbell? Yeah, Talks. she's, see, mommy left for work, so now she's home alone and she's begging for my attention, so <laughs> I think I'm going to turn into a pumpkin here, so I hope I gave you a good show. Or Matt, you, um, outside of, uh, actually hosting one of these this season and also being an incredible co-host on VF Talks. You did an incredible job and I, I thank you and I thank you for doing this and having a serious talk about this journey. I mean, I haven't had a serious talk about this journey with you on a live stream before. It was so good I, finding out some of these uh, additional details. I did know some of what you said, but I didn't know all of it. So it's always good to, and thank you for especially the codependency understanding because my understanding wasn't very good in that area so i appreciate that thank you well i um it was an honor and pleasure to do that and thank you for for uh helping me out with this and i will go back to maine and put a giant bow on this and talk about what's coming up in the next few weeks all right i'm gonna jump off thank you i'll everyone. see you, i'll see you tomorrow night for vf talks my friend catch me on the flippity flip i published a video here if you want to see it okay Piano awesome and then all things youtube and awesome fun things and super terrific he does a great daily show on awesome fun things every morning 8 15 a.m eastern time go see him he's great Five, 10 minutes. How can it hurt? Uh, doesn't hurt at all. It's great stuff. Thank you, Matt. Right. Appreciate it. Right. I'm going to go back yep. to me. Matt Haas, ladies and gentlemen, uh, an incredible guy, an incredible friend, very thankful um, for for his uh, co-hosting on VF Talks, but he's just a dear friend. I felt like I, I've known him all my life. He's just an incredible human being. So thank you, Matt. Love you, bro. Um, what's coming up? Uh, so tomorrow night, we're going to do VF Talks with Matt Haas that you just saw and Paul Burke and all of you. Uh, that'll be at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific tomorrow night. Um, I might be doing this remote from the Strawberry Festival down the street. I say that as a tentative because it was raining very bad this afternoon and there is some rain in the forecast for tomorrow. So if the weather holds up, I might just take my phone or my iPad, walk down the street and do my portion of VF Talks from down the street. But we'll see how that works out for everybody. If not, it'll be right here in, in my studio slash my office, wherever you want to call us. And then next week, um, I think what I might do is start bringing up some highlights in the sense of, well, there's still many people of this audience that don't know a lot about codependency. And I would love to spend some time just talking about 
exactly how I got better in touch with that. We, we've talked about it before on various episodes in season four and in season three. I think we might have talked about it in season one as well. We're going to talk about it next week. It, it'll probably be the Thursday show next week, but uh, it won't be in the closing credits yet. So I got to figure out what exactly is going to be the calendar for the next few weeks. And then somewhere along the way, as I'm preparing for a marathon in Portland on October 2nd, do I have, do I have a ticker that, that could show this real quick that I, I thought I had something hang on because if I do that, that, uh, that thing's coming up. Nope. That's not it. Is that it? If I don't, then I don't. Uh, I don't, I ha I had something that shows the, the, the time to that marathon. It's, it's 122 days from now, but, um, We'll start keeping a, a graphic on that as we go forward. Um, as we get closer, I'll talk about my training techniques and how I'm coming along with it. I am excited, and yet I am scared you know what less for October 2nd. And we will we will chronicle chronicleize that journey as we get through this summer. It might be special episodes. It might be the regular Thursday show, but we'll, we'll get there uh, as I get through this journey, as, as the long runs become 15 to 20 miles long. And I'm saying to myself, what the heck am I doing? That might happen. Anyhow. So if you have talks tomorrow night, 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. Um, but until then, I'm going to say the same thing I say at the end of every venture forward. MVF talks. Stay safe. Stay sane. Stay strong. Stay sober. You're worth it. We'll see you tomorrow night for VF Talks at seven, uh, seven at six thirty Eastern, three thirty Pacific, right here on the Venture Forward. Have a wonderful night. Take care of yourselves. I love you all, and fly be.